church? Thank you very much, Sister Larissa. Happy Sabbath, everybody. It is definitely a joy, pleasure, and privilege to be here today to share with you in God's holy word. For those of you who may not be aware, this morning, another one of our church members passed away, Sister Ginger Ramming, and then during the week, we lost Sister Esther. And I know that a lot of families are experiencing moments of bereavement and sadness. But this is the greatest time in the world to be a Christian. Got one amen in the church. It's the greatest time to be a Christian because whenever things are falling apart, and it appears as if there's no light at the end of the tunnel, reminds us that we serve a God who's still in, in charge and still in control. And I tell you, in difficult times, it's actually a plus to be on the Lord's side. And it's even better to know when he is on your side. This week, I had a scare in my family, one of my family members who is battling COVID was presumed to be missing until about 2 a.m. in the morning. To make a long story short, the person is still alive and in good health. We, we just give God thanks and glory for that. But we are li we're living in, as one songwriter puts it, a grand and an awful time. And so as we continue to share the presence and power of God through the way we live with others. Let us always be the sunshine in the room. Can we get an amen? You walk into a place that is filled with sorrow and pain and darkness, despair and disappointment. Carry the very power and presence of God into that room. You become the sunshine. Help others to know that God is still alive. Since we are going to be together as a district going forward, for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to begin a series on the sanctuary. And it promises to be a powerful uh, series to help us to be reminded of a few things in these I call them dark and evil days. And it allows me to preach it one time and the entire district to hear it. I have this bad habit of trying to provide the congregation with fresh bread every Sabbath. So when I preach here, I go to another church, I try my best not to carry the same sermon. <laughs> But it, 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 if you study the sanctuary, and we're going to study it for the next couple of weeks, um, the people never came to the sanctuary on Sabbath and found the same stale bread that was there the Sabbath before. And so the show bread was there to consistently remind us that God nourishes his people with the bread of life on a consistent basis. Today I want to speak to you briefly on the subject for his glory. For his glory. And our scripture lesson comes to us from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn there with me. If you're just taking notes, write down the passage of scripture and read it. You go home. But I like for you to read the Bible when you're in church. It's a part of the worship experience. In the interest of time, I'm going to begin reading in your hearing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17, we find these words, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh 
for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We read that again. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Let us pray. Father, as we discuss and meditate on the caption today, for your glory, Speak to our hearts, open our minds. Allow us to receive of your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul basically calls all of our afflictions in this life light. I guess some of you may be saying, well, if Paul went through what I'm going through, he won't call it light, but read his story. He went through a lot. In fact, he, he was going through something that was so devastating in his life that he prayed to God to remove it. And he prayed to God three times to remove it. And the answer was no. <clears throat> Not no full stop, but no with a promise. The promise was my grace is sufficient. So even when we pray to God and the answer is no, he says no with a promise. If you're asking God to do something for you or asking God to remove something from your life and the answer is no, I want you to also remember that that no comes with a promise. And the promise is that his grace is sufficient. Can I get a witness in here who believes that today? God's grace is sufficient. If there's anything that we can learn from the hurricanes that are passing by and some that stopped and devastated us right here in the Bahamas, it is this, storms are temporary. As devastating as they may be, they do not last forever. I know you got your mask on, but don't force me to preach and say amen at the same time. Every storm is temporary. And even though we still can see the devastating effects of Hurricane Dorian, the fact is the storm has passed. And I want to remind the people of God today that everything that you go through will also pass. I turned on the TV to discover that another storm is in the Atlantic. At this point, it is not supposed to come our way, but there are times when they say it won't come and it comes. And then there are times when they say it. It won't, uh, it, they say it's coming and it don't come. So we really don't know, but there's another storm. And even before it gets close to land, it's already category three. It's called Hurricane Larry. I don't know if you heard about it. But it's out there and it's headed in this direction. The projection is that it will turn and maybe but Bermuda might be the only uh, nation that may get a little touch of it. But the fact is we do not know that for sure. And knowing full well that there are thousands of people in the Bahamas who are yet to recover from the last devastating storm, namely Dorian, not to mention the fact that we're expecting new variants of the COVID-19, it seems as if everything now is totally out of control. But while that may be true. I was determined not to miss the object lesson of hope that God is trying to teach us in the midst of these storms. You see, just as God has a goal, 
And if I'm going to talk about Satan, I talk about God first. Can I get an amen? God has a goal, and that goal is for us to have total unwavering faith in him and the ability to live this life with confidence, knowing that in all things, he works it out for our good. God has a goal. Satan also has a goal. And Satan's goal is to make us feel that we are trapped in a permanent circle of pain, hurt, or untoward circumstances that will never end. But as believers, we have come to realize that these things do not stay forever. And when we look back at it, we discover that they were really only light afflictions. And as Paul says, they lasted but for a moment. There are persons on this, on this Zoom call, and even in church today, who may forget occasionally that God is still a way maker. And so when a storm comes, the storm does not come to destroy you. The storm only comes to build your faith and to remind you that we still serve a God who can make a way out of no way. You may feel as if you're going through the most difficult time in your life, but the word of God consistently teaches us, and it is teaching us this morning to hold on so that we can see what the end will be. I tell you today, my brothers and sisters, that our latter days will be greater than our former days, that our end will be better than our beginning. With God, victory is, is secured. And even though we go through a, 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 a roller coaster experience of ups and downs, at the end of the day, when we share in God's glory with him, and we look back at these things, we too, like Paul, will call them nothing more than light affliction. This period of time that we're passing through in the Bahamas today, we're passing through it. And it appears that we're passing through it without the power of God on our side. But let me tell you, God's power is available. Can I get an amen? The reason it is happening for the people of God, and we have to understand that there are two lines or two tracks in the world today. There's a track that the people of God are on, and there's a track that the non-believers are on. The reason why storms and pestilence and problems come, it's because some of us are about to lose hope over something that is temporary. Some of us are about to give up over something that will only last for a few months. Some of us are about to lose our minds because of a situation that will not even exist tomorrow morning. Remember that God is not a novice. Our situations are not new to him. There is nothing too hard for God to handle. Paul writes to the church at Corinth, and by extension, to the New Providence and Real, New Providence and Real Harvest churches today. And he says to us, keep life in its proper perspective. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we receive mercy, we faint not. Brothers and sisters, the reason why we don't faint in the midst of all that's happening is because we have received the ministry of Christ. We have tasted of his grace and his mercy. And every time we look back at how good God has been, when we are in the midst of a storm, we don't faint. We actually stand still, fold our arms, and wait to see the salvation of our God one more time. Because the moment I can't help myself, that's the time that I have no place else to turn. I will look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh not from the church. My help cometh from the Lord. 
There are some situations I go through, brothers and sisters, none of you can help me. And there are some situations that you go through that the pastor can't help you. But in times like that, that's when we look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. Can I get an amen in here this morning? It is a reminder that we still live in a fallen condition. Believers, you got to remember, we have not reached heaven yet. And some of us want life to be as if we have already arrived. Listen, the wages of sin has, has brought havoc on this earth. And as long as we're living in a world that is in a fallen condition, we still have to face storms. We still have to face persecution. We still have to face trials. We still have to face difficulties. What God has promised is that in it all and through it all, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So as long as you live on this earth, buckle up and hold on tight. Because as you come out of one storm, a next one is on the way. But the other side of that same coin is the same grace that God gives to us in the last storm. He has promised to give us even more grace in the next storm. Would you say amen to that? The effects of sin are real. The good news is we're going through every storm. And in the midst of the storm, God enables us to taste and to feel and to experience his power, his grace and his mercy. Could you imagine us going through COVID-19 COVID outside of the grace of God? Somebody talk to me now. Could you imagine us having to go through the bereavement? And I mean, so much bereavement in such a short time without the mercy of God. Could you imagine living in 2021, having no assurance of the power of God on your side? Can you imagine that? This is the reason why our response to COVID and the storms of life is different from those who do not know God. Second Corinthians chapter four, we're going to be in that chapter. Let's move down to verse six and seven. The Bible says, but God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness had shined in our hearts to give the light of knowledge to the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power of God and not of us. In other words, we have power to face the trials, the tribulations, the persecutions, the sickness, and even death. And this power is of God. It is not our power. If we had to face it in our power, we would surely shrink. We would surely faint. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We have power that is not ours, that enables us to stand when everybody else is falling apart and falling to pieces. God adds his super to our natural. And he allows us to fight Natural causes of sin with supernatural power. And this allows us to be more than conquerors through him that loves us. Let's continue to read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Paul says, we are troubled on every side, but yet not distressed. That's beautiful. Trouble is everywhere, but we're not distressed. He says, we are perplexed, but we are not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. You and I are walking paradoxes. Life expects for us to uh, respond one way, but we respond the opposite way. 
because we have a treasure in this earthen vessel that is that is not our power, but it is because it is the power of God. How many people outside of God could say, I'm troubled on every side, yet I'm not distressed? How many non-believers can say, I'm perplexed, but not despair? The Christian has a testimony that nobody else has. We can be persecuted, but we know that we're not forsaken. We can be cast down, but we know that we're not destroyed. We are walking paradoxes. Things that would send people crazy. You and I are able to go through it as if water is running down the duck's back. And that's only because our faith is in a God that we know can handle whatever life brings our way. And this conviction teach us that these things are only light afflictions. The scripture teaches us that they are only temporary and we will move on until our purpose on earth is done. But the child of God Nothing can take you from this earth until God is finished with you. Did you hear what I said just now? When I hear people say, oh, I tired now and I don't want to do this anymore. And so, you know, even in church, some folks say, I'm not serving anymore. You know, I didn't do my part as if God is finished with you. Let me tell you something. When God is finished with you, everybody knows. It's called a funeral. They bring the body, lay it out here, and everybody knows that God is now through. But until then, we ought to be walking emblems and symbols of what God can do in the life of people who trust and believe in him. Would you say amen to that? Outwardly or in the flesh, our bodies is telling us that we don't have much more of this that we can take. I'm only 54 years old. When I was 30, I thought 54 was old. I'm discovering now that it's not really old. But the fact is, some mornings I get up and I have pain in places that I never used to have it before. And as you get closer to 60 and on to 70, some of you may know what I'm talking about. As you get closer to 60 and 70, you start to say, you know, I can't take this stuff anymore. Well, my brothers and sisters, I just want you to know that until God is through, you can take it. Can I get an amen right there? All this stuff is light. Not only that, it is only for a moment. And when you get to the point in life where you feel that you would never get through, just look back at where God brought you through. And you realize that, hey, not so long ago, it felt like that thing was lasting forever, but it was actually but for a moment. You have survived stuff that have killed people because of your perspective and because of your biblical worldview. Have you ever listened to a 911 call? When a person calls 911, they call because it is an emergency. Your pressure is high. You're panicking. And you call because someone is dying or because a house is on fire or because somebody got shot with a gun. So you call because you need help right away. And then someone that you don't know, someone who doesn't know your situation, Somebody who is not present where you are. They can't see the stress you're under. They answer the phone and their first words to you are, stay calm. And your response is, what? Stay calm? My wife just got shot. We just got robbed. My house is on fire. Somebody who don't know you, somebody who don't understand what you're going through right now, somebody you can't see and somebody who can't see you answers the phone on the other end and their first words to you are stay calm. Tell me the truth. Wouldn't you want to just go through the phone and 
and help them out a little bit so they can understand what you are going through. But they're saying to you, stay calm. Brothers and sisters, the calmer you remain on the line, the faster you can get help. Did you hear what I said just now? If you're screaming and the person can't even make up what you're saying, you've lost your mind. They can't help you. But if you stay calm, cool, and collected, and you speak clearly, they can get help to you much faster when you stay calm. What we find in the scriptures are answers to all of our 911 calls. And as we open the scripture, the word consistently tells us to stay calm. Hold on. Keep it together because help is on the way. And the calmer you stay, the faster the help arrives. Sometimes God has already shown up and has already worked it out. But because we're not calm, we haven't seen what he has already done. How many times you have cried and wet your pillow at night with tears. Just to discover three weeks later that while you were crying, God had already worked it out for you. Am I talking to somebody today? Stay calm, brethren. The word for today is the people of God, we're going to be fine. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 12, and verse 5, we find these words If thou hast run with the footman, they have wearied thee. How canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, and how will thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? Brothers and sisters, in the dry season, the Jordan River was nothing more than just a few pools of water with dribbles between uh, a, 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 a couple of places where people would, would, would find some water there. But in the rainy season, it would transform from just that little area where you had some water deep enough to perform a little baptism or to dip in to a, 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 a tyrant of water coming downstream with so much velocity that if you jump into the water, it will wash you all the way downstream. What Jeremiah is saying to us today is if you can't stand in the Jordan River in the dry season, how are you going to be able to stand in the Jordan River in the rainy season? If the footmen weary thee, what are you going to do when the Calgary comes? Let's go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 as we wrap this up. And we wrap it up with verses 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Somebody say amen to that. For our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen. Thank you, Jesus. But at the things which are not seen, seen, for the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen is eternal. If the things that we could see is causing us to lose faith and to tremble and to crumble under the pressure, brothers and sisters, it is because we are looking at the wrong things. When we take our eyes of what is temporal and place our eyes on that which is eternal, the temporal does not affect us the same way. 
I know that I'm going to die one day. But I also know that when the trumpet sounds and I rise from the grave, I will never die again. So why focus on the fact that I'm going to die one day here, when I can focus on the fact that I'm going to live forever? If we keep our minds on heavenly things, this is a constant, this is a constant message throughout the word of God. If we keep our eyes on the things that are eternal, the things that are temporary won't bother us so much. But because we are earthbound, because our affections are attached to the things of this world. This is where we keep our focus. Brothers and sisters, take your eyes off this world and put it on the things that God has in store for us. And when things happen down here, we'll recognize that it is light. It's but for a moment. But God has reserved that which is eternal for me in his kingdom. Would you say amen to that? Can you connect your present condition with the glory that is to come? It is only when we could, could, could connect what's happening now with the glory that is to come that we can go through it with no problem. In the book of Hebrews, we read that Jesus endured the cross, but for the glory that would come after it. We could endure everything that happens on this earth with the help of God if we could just grab hold of the glory that comes after that. Your glory is going to be tied to your story. No story, no glory. We love to talk about the stories in the Bible because it gives God's glory, give God glory. We like to talk about the stories of those who went into the fiery furnace because it gives God glory. We like to talk about Daniel and the lion's den because it gives God glory glory. We like to talk about the storms that he calmed and the diseases that he healed. Why? Because it gives God glory glory. Well, God is still writing stories for his glory. And you and I are privileged to be new stories in the book. But if we have no story, how are we going to give God glory? We look at persons who have everything that you could ever dream of and you say, wow, I'd like to have that life. Oh, yeah. Check out what the person went through before they arrived to where they are now. Are you able to go through that story in order to uh, 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 live that glory? Brothers and sisters, God is still writing stories for his glory. Would you say amen to that? And he's writing a story in your life and he's writing a story in my life. And the way we respond determines whether or not he gets the glory or he's disappointed. What would your story be? Yes, I went through it. But by the grace of God, I stood firm. And God got the glory. We are in a storm right now. But I declare to you today that in the midst of the storm, the sky is still blue. The sun is still shining. See, clouds only covers the fact that the sky is still blue. Clouds only block the fact that the sun is still shining. But behind every cloud, the sun is still shining and the sky is still blue. It's like a tornado. It will come and tear up the city. But drive through that city a few years later. And you'll discover that the city looks better after the tornado than it did before. It's after the tornado that new buildings are erected. If it wasn't for the tornado, you would still be in that same old rickety raggedy building. In fact, it's the storms of life that helps us to build stronger. If we didn't have hurricanes, we'd still be living in touch houses. 
But it was because of the hurricane that we recognized we have to build stronger. And through every storm, we get more ingenuity and more innovation as to how to build better and stronger. Sometimes we have to thank God for some storms because when you look at where we are after the storm, we ought to be far more grateful when we compare it to where we were before the storm. It's after the tornado when you drive through a city that you see new buildings, new streets, new storms. I mean, through new, new homes. Storms is only a sign that God is about to do something new. Help you to build something new. Help you to build something stronger. Amen, Pastor Preach. We can't get so attached to the old that we fall in love with it when God is actually sending us storms so that we can enjoy something new. So let the winds blow. Let the storms come. When it has passed, I know that God has something new for me. So I close with verse 18 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Here we find these words. We look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, the Bible says. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Did you get something out of that today? Come on, did, did you receive the word of the Lord today? If it bless your hearts, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise in his house today. Those of you on Zoom, type in an amen. A thank you, Jesus. Listen, the things which are seen are but for a moment and temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. And that's where our focus needs to be. So I have a word for those today who've lost a loved one. Your heart is broken. Life may not even feel like it's worth living anymore right now. But yet God is saying, look beyond the grave to the point where you will be reunited again. That makes life worth living. That makes you willing to carry on to allow God to finish what he has begun in you so that somebody else can come to know him through your life. It doesn't matter what tough, trying, difficult situation you go through. If you can just look at it from the perspective of eternity, you would be able to fulfill the scripture. In all things, give thanks. For all things work together for good. Note in COVID-19, that might be a hard scripture, a hard pill to swallow. But take the vitamin anyhow. All things work together good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his promise. May God bless us as we continue to exercise faith in a God that loves us, cares about us, and has trusted us to shine for him during these dark times. For this is my prayer in Jesus' name.